untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white deck titled Flicker Friends as voted on by my supporters on Patreon as the deck is built around Ephemerate, the one-mana instant that exiles target creature we control and then returns it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So we essentially flicker one of our creatures, great for re-enabling any enter the battlefield abilities. And then Ephemerate also has a rebound, meaning if we cast a spell from our hand, we exile it as it resolves and at the beginning of our next upkeep we may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So at the end of the day we get to flicker two of our creatures for just one mana which is a pretty great deal. And then of course our deck is going to have plenty of creatures with powerful enter the battlefield abilities. And to speed things up we also have the full playset of Lanor Elves as well as the full playset of Gilded Goose which also has a nice ETB effect that we can always target with Ephemerate to make an extra food token. Then at 2 mana, to give us a bit of disruption, we have the full playset of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, and the only non-creature spell in the deck is the 4 copies of Ephemerate, so we don't get affected by Thalia's extra mana attacks too much, but it can be very effective against other spell-based combo decks. And then at 3 mana we have 2 copies of Knight of Autumn, which can potentially destroy artifacts or enchantments, gain life, or enter the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. We've got Lenore Visionary, which also helps us ramp and draws a card when it enters. Skyclave Apparition, as one of our main removal spells, can exile target non-token, non-land permanent from the opponent with mana value 4 or less, and when the Apparition leaves the battlefield, the opponent gets an XX Blue Illusion Creature token, where X is the mana value of the exiled card. And then a full playset of Elite Spellbinder, gives giving us a bit of hand disruption by taking a look at the opponent's hand and then we may exile a non-land card from it and for as long as that card remains exiled its owner may play it at an increased cost of 2 generic mana and then a 3-1 flyer also a nice way to pressure the opponent's life total. At 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Captain Cisse which has a bit of a package built into this deck with a few legendary creatures we can search up by tapping Captain Cisse and those include of course Thalia although we're more interested in some of the more expensive legendaries like Yasharn Implacable Earth a 4 mana 4-4 that when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a forest and plains card and put it into our hand and then players cannot pay life or sacrifice a non-land permanence to cast spells or activate abilities so that can be very effective against opposing sacrifice decks or even goblin decks wanting to sacrifice goblins to a skirk prospector. It does have a bit of a nombo with our gilded goose as we won't be able to sacrifice our food tokens while the Asharn's in play but that's the cost we're willing to pay for the extra explosiveness that the goose provides. Then we also have a one of copy of Emil the Blessed, a 4 mana 4 4 legendary unicorn, and for 3 mana we can exile another target creature we control and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this gives us a permanent way of potentially flickering our creatures and gaining incremental advantage. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we may pay 1 mana, and if we do, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And if it's a unicorn, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, although Emil is the only unicorn in the deck. We also have Shalai, Voice of Plenty, a 3 4 flying legendary angel, and we and Planeswalkers we control and other creatures we control have Hexproof and for 6 mana we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control so another nice mana sink to go over the top and then not a legendary creature but at 5 mana we have 2 copies of Thrag Tusk which is one of the better targets for Ephemerate as a 5-3 beast that when it enters the battlefield it gains 5 life and when Thrag Tusk leaves the battlefield we get to make a 3-3 green beast creature token so if we flicker Thrag Tusk we gain 5 life and we get to make a 3-3 beast which is a lot of value and then we also have a one of Trostani Discordant, generates two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with a lifelink when it enters the battlefield, and other creatures we control get plus one plus one, and at the beginning of our end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own, so it can be useful against opposing steel effects. And then we also have a one of Tulsimir, Friend to Wolves, a 5 mana 3-3 three, three legendary elf scout, and when Tulsimir enters the battlefield, we get to make a 3-3 three, three legendary wolf token, and whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under our control, we gain three life, and that creature fights up to one target creature we don't control. And then the mana base is very straightforward, all the green-white dual lands with Temple Garden, Sun Petal Grove and Pathway, and then five basic forests and five basic plains. So that's the deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Can maybe live the dream of Ephemerate on our Thrank Tusk. Facing Tournament Grounds and Knight Tribal. Could be quite aggressive. Do get to play turn 2 Spellbinder, turn 3 Yashar and turn 4 Thrank Tusk, so we'll see if that's enough. Seeing the importance of those early accelerants. 
without Lunar Elves and Goose, the deck just feels too slow. Worthy Knight also going to be a problem, so finding Skyclave Apparition to exile it would be nice. Good Spellbinder, good Visionary. Visionary lets me ramp straight into Thrank Tusk, which might be more important here. And there's Skyclave Apparition too. Alright, so we've got some powerful options available now. Could even Apparition and Ephemerate right away. Inspiring Veteran to pump the team. And we'll take five. Think I got a Thrank Tusk here. As opposed to Apparition. Keep up Ephemerates. Don't really want to trade away Thrank Tusk since we want to be able to flicker it. Blood Crypt untapped, could be an Ember Cleave in our future. Opponent attacks with everyone. So it looks like an Ember Cleave to me. Could also be Black Lance Paragon to give one of their Knights Death Touch. Doesn't target the human token at least. So if I block the human and they cleave it. It's not the end of the world. We lose Thrak Tusk, but we don't take too much damage. So this also plays around Black Lance Paragon a little bit. Opponent does have the Ember Cleave. And puts it on Knight of the Evil Legion. So we're at four and a Stormfist Crusader. Gonna start draining our life total as well. Alright, so we need to stabilize. And we can play Apparition, Exiling Knight of the Evil Legion, keep up Ephemerates. Is that the play? I think so. And then Ephemerate, either Thrank Tusk or Apparition, depending on where they move the cleave. Opponent moves it on to the Crusader. And a Smitten Swordmaster are gonna try and drain us. So if I Ephemerate Apparition on Crusader, we're not dead. We fall to one. And then Ephemerate on Thrank Tusk will gain us a bit of life back. Another Ephemerate, alright, we're doing it. So I can Spellbinder, keep up Ephemerate, no real reason to tap my creatures I suppose. And there's a Black Lance Paragon we were talking about. Make that more expensive. And then probably pass a turn. Cleave on Worthy Knights. That's fine. And a Venerable Knights. Could have also tried to flicker Apparition on Worthy Knight in response to the moving the cleave, since that's probably what we're gonna do. So we could have denied them one human token. Flicker Thrank Dusk. And then we can try to end the game with our flyers now. Ember Cleave still a scary card. This 
especially combined with the death touch provided by Paragon. Amber cleave on knights. And uh, yeah, we'll just block with all the ground troops. Don't want to take any trample damage. Thrank does down finally, still makes a beast on the way out. And we're scheduled to win in two turns with our flyers here. Alright. Looks like we might have gotten there. Very close game, all the way down to one life. All the opponent spells in exile here, made more expensive by a spellbinder. And then the swordmaster that the opponents adventured a while back. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one elves, turn two visionary perhaps. Will give us access to plenty of mana facing the life gain deck. So we're gonna want to find something like a Skyclave Apparition to go with our Emil to exile a bunch of the opponent's creatures, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. Put on black-white, so they might have Veto in there. For now, triple Soul Warden, alright. That's gonna gain the opponent a lot of life since we have no shortage of creatures in our deck. Ephemerate could be useful. And there's a Bishop of Wings. Opponent's already up to 28. And there's a Skyclave Apparition, perfect. So, start by exiling the Bishop of Wings. And then we can start exiling the opponent's creatures one by one. If the opponent doesn't have any removal, Emil's gonna stick around. And then Apparition plus Emil will uh, deal with the opponent's creatures, although of course they do still get those illusion tokens. But they should be manageable. Angel Vitality puts the opponent to 40. So I can play a meal and activate the ability right away. Could also cast our Ephemerates. Although I kind of like a meal activates. And then in response to the Soul Warden triggers, we activate a meal on Apparition. So we exile the Angel and the opponent gains a little bit less life from the current Soul Warden triggers on the stack, although they do still gain life from the Illusion and from Apparition re-entering. So our opponent's still at a healthy 55. Gotta watch out for a Jani wiping our board. Youthful Valkyrie's fine. Alright, so can start exiling Soul Wardens with both Ephemerate and Emil. That's probably step one. And then we'll activate Emil. And then we'll keep one Emil activation available. I 
Alright, opponent has an army of illusions, but we can hold them off with our 4 4. Another Angel Vitality. We will probably exile here. It's possible we were better off exiling the Soul Warden first, and then now the Angel Vitality. But it's not like the opponent gaining one or two more life is gonna make a huge difference here at this point. Alright, we got rid of all the Soul Wardens at long last. And there shall I to take over the skies. So we should still be concerned about a potential Ajani wiping our board, but otherwise we should have most angles covered. And we'll pay one to put a counter on the goose, pass a turn, and now Shalai can start pumping our team. Looks like they might have an Ajani here. Yep. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Well, we knew this was going to be a problem all along. Opponents finally found land 4. But you can see how if Ajani doesn't show up, we can easily take over that game. So yeah, there's not much I can do here. Play Knight of Autumn, gain some life. Or make it a 4-3. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Bit of ramp with double Gilded Goose. Probably still play some Petal Grove that way if we draw an untapped forest we can play double Goose next turn. And then Ephemerate, not a bad combo with Trostani. Opponent on Sultai with a Wild Growth Walker, Blast from the Past. Could exile that with Apparition. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And then I think I'll hang on to my goose. Playing a second goose means that a single removal on the goose doesn't prevent us from ramping, but it does quote unquote waste a food token too. Alright, so hit for two. Play a goose, and then we can make a food token end of turn. We also keep up ephemerate to maybe flicker apparition if needed. Uh, Lenor Elves is fine. Let's make some more food. And then we could just play Trostani here. Is that better than Apparition on Elves? I think so. Now I might leave up Ephemerates in case of removal, so just attack with Apparition, leave Goose back. Jade Light Ranger is acceptable. As we see, Cast Down, which cannot kill our Trostani, but can kill Skyclave Apparition potentially. So I could go end of turn Ephemerate on Skyclave, Exile Jade Light Ranger, and then in our upkeep, Flicker Trostani. Opponent did keep Cast Down on top. So could also keep Ephemerate until they cast the cast down to essentially blank it. Yeah, I guess we'll wait. And then for now, 
apparition on jade lights or apparition on elves so they cannot cast the sweeper like fine finality if they're still playing the old standard version because that could be a scary card yeah i guess we can attack with everyone here and then still have apparition and ephemerates opponent trades for apparition And then maybe end of turn all ephemerates Trostani anyway. It's gonna be another Jade Light for now. Sees a Lanor Elves on top, which goes to the graveyard, and a Forests, which they can play. So opponent may be planning to cast down my Apparition. Now I'm again incentivized to wait on Ephemerate instead of just targeting Trostani. That way if they try and target Apparition we can flicker it and then later flicker Trostani. Although it's possible that flickering Trostani could have just won us the game too here. We'll leave Trostani back. My opponent does seem to go for a cast down. Alright, opponent doesn't jump with a 1 1, making me think they don't have find finality in hand. So. I'm gonna go ahead and play the knights with two plus one counters. Alright, we're empty handed. Hopefully, dodge a sweeper and then ephemerates can flick our Trostani to make two more tokens. Biogenic Ooze makes a 2 2 token. So Flickering Apparition doesn't get rid of the Ooze. Captain C says an excellent draw as well. So if I were to attack with everyone like this, opponent takes two in the air, and then they can trade, jump E to 2-2, two -two. that's fine. Will that damage happen? So now the question becomes, do we play around Find Finality? Or another Sweeper by holding Captain Cisse? If they just have a single removal spell for Trostani, the uh, Gilded Geese no longer present lethal, and the ground could get stalled. So I think I should still play Captain Cisse. As additional insurance. Opponent just passes. Guess we'll sack a food token. There's Thrank Tusk. Captain Cisse can activate. Maybe go for Shalai. Yeah, there's a bunch of good options here. Play shall I might see a removal in response. Vraska's contempt on Trostani. And then can still attack with Knight of Autumn. Which I'm fine trading, although next turn we can put counters on the team. So it's probably not worth it then. 
can make food token end of turn. Next turn, activate Shalai if she's still there. And if Shalai dies, we can still probably activate Captain Cisse, find more goodies. So yeah, definitely a fun matchup, playing an old standard deck essentially. Two pretty fair decks for historic standards. And there's Emil, which we could have also searched for with Captain Seasake and flicker any of our creatures. But just activating Shalai seems like the way to go here. So we can attack with everyone but Captain Cisse. Not her contempt. Sir points at six. I guess they can still survive, but it will involve blocking the Knight of Autumn so they can keep Biogenic Ooze alive by chomping with the Illusion. And we'll activate C sand of turn. Our hand's pretty good, so don't mind playing a grindy game where we flicker Thraktusk with Emil a bunch. Oh, Hydroid Crisis for four. Opponent goes up to four. Sadly, don't have a backup Trostani to search up. Let's go with. I guess a. Yasharn or Tulsimir. And then if I were to attack with everyone, block, block, opponent takes four exactly. Alright, so we got there in the end. Although, like we said, we were definitely prepared to play a longer game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Jagantha deck, and we've got a nice opening hand. Turn 1 Elves setting up a turn 2 Apparition even, thanks to Temple Garden, although most likely turn 2 Thalia. Alright, Thoughtseize so can have a look, maybe takes Elves, but we can still play turn 2 Thalia at least. So it might be a Sacrifice deck, in which case Yasharn's going to be very effective. And yeah, there we see the goose. Next turn apparition can potentially exile something like a mayhem devil if that shows up. It's gonna be a voice strider instead. Not as scary as mayhem devil, but we'll still apparition it's And yeah, we can cast our Yashar next turn, which is probably our best card in the matchup. Opponent sacrifices the goat to scry. And then Yasharn helps us hit our land drops for a Thraktusk, and an Ephemerid on Thraktusk is great value too. For opponents ramping into Corvold, that could potentially still give us a bit of trouble, but Yasharn also helps. Trail of Crumbs is acceptable, can maybe flicker Apparition at some point to exile it. But Yasharn also makes it difficult for the opponent to leverage. So yeah, we'll play Yasharn. I suppose if the opponent chumps and has Fatal Push, they could kill Yasharn. Although that's not a card you see every day. Opponent falls to 10. 
And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Yasharn just too powerful against the Sacrifice decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a relatively slow hand, but being on the play I think still makes this keepable. Turn 3 Spellbinder, double Apparition is a lot of interaction. And then Trostani to speed up our clock. Alright, so probably a Gruul aggro deck. Apparition, not a bad answer to Belt Collector. Alright, never mind. Elf Tribal. I think I gotta keep Apparition to exile cards like Archdruid that they could play next turn. But we'll have a look first. And then we'll know more about the opponent's hands. Double Tyvar. Okay, so it's a bit of an alternative build of elves. Well, I guess we take Collected Company then. Make that two more expensive. And that's going to be a while before they can cast it. Spellbinder does a good job of pressuring their Planeswalker. Hit for three. Next turn we can play Trostani already. Of course I'm here in material. Just look at me. And yeah, that will take out Tyvar by pumping our spellbinder. <laughs> can even attack with a goose. Elvish Master, I don't mind exiling with Apparition. So your opponent is going wide. Ooh, Shalai is awesome too. Yeah, let's start by exiling Warmaster. But I'm definitely interested in playing Shalai. And I'm okay trading now while the opponent's creatures are small. Could even attack with... Apparition, although double block's not the best for me. And then Gilded Goose may be better off making a food token. Opponent takes it. Yeah, could also play Knight of Autumn. Although it doesn't do a whole lot on this board. Five mana for the opponent, so one short of casting company. And I guess Tyvar into company works, thanks to Tyvar's passive. So we'll see what that hits. So that could have been a reason to still attack with the Apparition, since their opponent was maybe not willing to trade. Alright, they hit some good ones, Archdruid and Imperius Perfect. So they've got access to pretty much all the mana in the world now with Archdruid. Although we can take out Tyvar. And we're pretty close to killing the opponent as well. So, can play Shall I? And then take out Tyvar. And I guess now I'll play Knight of Autumn. And the opponent sees a writing on the wall and concedes. Next turn they're dead to my flyers, and one draw step is unlikely to present lethal. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck, and we've got an acceptable hand. Turn 1, either Goose or Elves. Turn 1, Goose sets up turn to Apparition. We are up against a Red Black Arcanist deck. Or even a Junt Arcanist deck. Uh, turn 1 Elves, probably still the way to go, and then I can set up turn 2 Spellbinder. Another Stitcher Supplier. 
Claim to fame in the graveyards. Take one. And we'll have a look at the opponent's hand with Spellbinder. Double Croxa Abundant Harvest. Opponent missing red mana. I think we'll take the harvests. And then our opponent's gonna struggle to cast their spells. They might just put Lurus in hand next turn, but Apparitions, pretty clean answer for it. Alright, they found their red. So we could see Croxa. And what do I discard? Probably Gilded Goose. Even though I don't really want to play Apparition next turn, so maybe discarding an Apparition so I'm guaranteed to play a Sharn in two turns is worth it. How close are they to escape Croxa? I guess that's still a reason to hold on to Apparition. Maybe just get rid of Yasharn. Yeah, part of the reasoning is that Yasharn won't necessarily want to attack into the suppliers or block them and doesn't line up all that favorably against Croxa if they manage to escape it out of the graveyard. So I can hit for four, play Goose and Thalia. Captain Cisse is excellent, so I'm probably okay losing my apparition to get Cisse in play. And that's going to provide a steady stream of creatures for us. What do we want to find with Captain? I like Emil, I like Trostani, Shalai. Those are all pretty good. Shalai threatens lethal next turn the most, I think. So we'll grab Shalai. Since next turn we can just activate the ability and hit for 8 damage in the air, or 9 damage with the goose. If we don't have to tap it for mana, that is. Opponent attacks. Can block supplier with goose without uh, taking damage. Young Paramancer is fine. And our opponent explodes. They see Shalai. That's gonna pump the team. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. So, overall, this green white Flicker Friends might not be the most competitive deck. It's definitely pretty fair for historic standards. Not doing anything too busted. But uh, getting to go off with Ephemerate, especially with a Thrank Tusk gameplay, is a ton of fun. So don't expect the deck to be competitive, but a fun, casual, historic deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.